What's going on, you beautiful children of God? Guys, we're back for another new video. We're going to be looking at Psalm 149 today. That brings us one step closer to wrapping up our time here in the Psalter. My name is Rex. Jesus Christ saved me from an awful life of addiction. And the, the, the joy that I feel over that transformation and over the gift of rebirth and salvation, that's what drives me to grow as a Christian. It's what drives me to do the work here on this channel and hopefully be able to share and grow with you guys as well as believers and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, let's get into this uh, prayer. We'll jump into the psalm and then we'll look at what I have to share with y'all today. I think it's going to be wonderful. Let's pray. Father God, we want to come before you today, Lord, and thank you for another chance to grow with you, Lord. Uh, a, a, another chance to push ahead in our walk of faith, Lord. Another chance to actively pursue you, Lord. And that is a gift beyond measure. I know for myself, Lord, I should have died a hundred times out there in these streets. And you, you made a way for me to be here right now, today in this moment, Lord, appreciating you and just grateful to not have to be the old me, Father God. Continue to push us to grow, Lord. Let the words that we read today, let the study that we do today, Lord, be nourishing to us on every level. We ask that this video be able to reach the hearts and the ears and the eyes of anyone out there not yet at the foot of the cross and anyone out there who is perhaps backslidden from their place at the foot of the cross. Father God, we pray a hedge of protection around the lives of and a blood covering over the hearts and the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord Jesus. Lead us in your way, Father God. Strengthen us, Lord. Shore us up against this fallen world, Lord, against carnality and sin and darkness and depravity that permeates everything around us, Father God, in this fallen world. Allow us to be your vessels, Lord Jesus, that we could shine with the brightness of the gospel, that we could speak with the truth of testimony, Father God, that we could act on conviction and speak of conviction, Father God. We pray all of this in the glorious, merciful, supreme, and superior name of your Son, and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, in your heavenly, holy, and eternal name we pray. Amen. Let's get into it, friends. Psalm 149. It's short, but I promise you we got some good stuff here, all right? Now, Psalm 149 prays to God for his salvation and judgment. Verse 1. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise in the assembly of saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker, let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance, let them sing praises to him with his timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people, he will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints." Praise the Lord. All right. So, let's get into what I have to share with you all today. Um, again, thank you so much for this chance to grow with you. You just heard Psalm 149. Stick around. This is where we go walking in the Word. Now, we have three sections here in 149, with verses 1 through 4 focusing on the community amid worship. And verse 5 serves as a sort of hinge point as it showcases the community of God at worship, at work, and in glory. Lastly, verses 6 through 9 
looks to the judgment of the nations. Now, it's unclear if an actual military victory, a historical victory, is in view here, or could it be the eschatological victory of God, the ultimate, penultimate victory of God, over all the earth's nations that resist him? Let's look to verse 1. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of saints. I think this is my, the, my favorite thing I have to share with you guys today. So, that, that second line, sing to the Lord a new song, right? A new song is needed, and this notion, that this ideal, is so powerful, because amid new mercies is when people see, they feel, they, they, they experience the inadequacy of all our past efforts at praise, right? We need, a, we need a new song, something more, something better, something more pleasing to the character of God, closer to the character of Christ. Let's look to verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in their Maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their King. So, the title Maker here is twofold in its meaning. It looks, obviously, first and foremost, to the wonderful work of creation. But it also refers to God's divine work specifically in forming and birthing the nation of Israel amid the exodus with what happened later at Sinai as well. All of this is, is, is more than sufficient to earn and draw praise to God Almighty, right? Let us look to verse 3, friends. I love y'all so much. By the way, new video on Psalm 150 coming tomorrow evening. <clears throat> Let them praise His name with the dance. Let them sing praises to Him with the timbrel and harp. I guess maybe the church in that town in Footloose, they might not have enjoyed this verse as much. You know, we're, we're, we're called to praise with dance. It reminds me of, um, it draws to my mind David when, when the ark is finally being returned. You know, if you know, you know. It's a fantastic story of not being afraid to look crazy and foolish to everyone else in, in your praise and worship of God Almighty. So, our psalmist calls on Israel to use more than their mouths in praise calls on them to actively celebrate with dance and instruments to act from a place of joy. Remember, we, we, we often confuse joy and happiness. Happiness is contingent upon environment and circumstance. Joy is not. Joy is not. A, a truly joyful Christian can be joyful in prison, joyful in suffering, not because the, the suffering itself is joyful, but because a life lived in servitude to God is. It always draws me back to the um, profoundly powerful and extremely difficult to read at times book, Tortured for Christ. Um, I can't think of the man's name right now. It was written by the same gentleman who would go on to start the publication Voice of the Martyrs. And um, if you have never read that book as a Christian, I cannot encourage you enough. It is so powerful. So, so powerful. So if you have not, check out Torture for Christ. Um, let's look to verse 4. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. That word beautify in the Hebrew has a, a sense of glorifies. And this is whether it's his people or temple. God adorns. God glorifies. God beautifies. God adds to, right? Let's look at verse 5. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. 
So this is a sort of a continuation from verse 4 with the glorification of humans. God's people exalt because God's reign leads to their transformation into glorious images of their creator, God, and redeemer. They become an earthly showcase of the goodness of God. Not the full goodness of God, but the goodness of God made, made, made manifest here and now. This is why it's so important to do the work of the kingdom, friends. All right, we're going to close up here by looking at verse 7. I know this was a short video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, verse 7. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. Let's go ahead. We'll just throw in that last section of 7, 8, and 9a, let's call it. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of irons. Fetters, of course, being shackles, handcuffs, however you want to look at it. To execute on them the written judgment, this honor have all his saints. So, God can and has at times used his people as a tool of judgment against the nations. So, for some at-home reading... You know, if you're not familiar with it, the, 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 the best example of this is found in the book of Joshua and in Joshua's dealings with the Canaanites as a proxy of God Almighty, right? So I would encourage anybody that has not checked out the book of Joshua to absolutely check that out. Um, I love you guys so much. Thank you for another chance to share with you all. Um, if you have not already, I'd love to have you subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell, give the video a thumbs up, share it if you loved it. Seven new shorts every week, three long format videos. I'd love to be able to share them with you guys and grow together as believers. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, video ideas, drop them in the comment section. Guys, if you got prayer requests, send as many as you want, be as vague as you want, as specific as you want. God loves when we come together and we lift up our brothers and sisters in prayer, when we lift up the lost, when we lift up the needful, amen. It is such a beautiful, beautiful thing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with praying for ourselves and the things going on in our lives. That, that is absolutely fine. But it is truly rewarding and beautiful to put in that time at the work of intercession and, and, and sharing and, and praying over the troubles of others. So please... Hit me up those prayer requests. If you have a, a, a testimony, a witness to the goodness, the glory of God, the, the wonder of rebirth, the power of the gospel message, share it down here. Share it out there. But whatever you're going to do, make sure you're sharing it. Guys, I love you so much. Father God loves you even more. Whatever you're going to do, get out there. Be bold. Be active. Get your walk of faith on and Whatever you're going to do, get it for God. I'll see you guys tomorrow night for another brand new video on Psalm 150, where we wrap up our time in the beautiful book of Psalms. I love y'all so much.